Wow, long time no see. Definitely been super busy with work, but uh, it's been an interesting year. I mean, so much going on. Uh, luckily, again, very fortunate. Uh, my own uh, personal uh, career really making really good money, which is, uh, you know, obviously everybody loves that. Um, but time wise, it's really thrown my schedule, you know, into complete disarray. Whereas before, I was very committed to kind of doing a few videos a week minimum. And now it's just tough because finding like a block of time to like think about what I want to talk about uh, and then uh, just getting out there to do it is tough. But hopefully that'll change in the near future. Anyway, aside from that, uh, so surprising to see that, uh, you know, silver in particular uh, has uh, has gone up and stayed up uh, quite a few times. I mean, what, two or three times that it's been in the low 30s. That's actually pretty interesting. Myself, personally, uh, I thought, you know, it'll spike up and then it'll come back down. Um, I thought gold would be the one with staying power. And, and I guess that's kind of proven uh, to be the case. Gold is, you know, stuck around. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays out over time with uh, rates starting to drop uh, because that'll make uh, fixed income uh, more attractive than holding metals. So I don't know. We'll see. It's Again, the hard part with silver, gold, any of them is just there's no rhyme or reason really like, you know, with, with regard to spot price. Um, and since I haven't been buying as much recently, like I'm interested to see kind of what the premium environment uh, uh, has been. Because, I mean, it's been kind of a, a turnoff for quite a while since the beginning of the pandemic, you know, where premiums just skyrocketed, you know, these bullion dealers don't have a reason to drop their prices or, you know, make it more attractive to buy. So, um, yeah, definitely, you know, some opportunities there, I would say, as far as, uh, as you know, lower price uh, points for buying into silver. But... You know, when it's getting into the low 30s, that also makes me think potentially, you know, do I want to sell some weight? I mean, if I can make, you know, 10 grand with a couple hundred ounces, not bad, not bad. I mean, that's a healthy chunk of change. And I think the thing, too, is that, you know, what we've seen is the, with the up and down is um, is interesting because uh, with the stock market, for example, I mean, the volatility there, even though, you know, it's record high, it's been record highs for oh, quite a while. I mean, it's, it's been high after high after high, and that's probably going to continue. That's the other thing. You're going to get lots of people talking about politics like, oh, Kabbalah's going to crash. No, she's not. No, she's not. In fact, Donald Trump is more likely to crash the stock market uh, than anybody because, again, the one thing the market doesn't like is uncertainty. And, it, you know, you can, you can make all kinds of arguments like, well, he's a Republican. They're going to cut that. Stop. Stop. As far as the stock market, like, yeah, that stuff's a little short-term boost, but the biggest thing the market likes is cheap money and certainty. Those two things combined, the market's in, in heaven. And that's kind of what we have right now with the, you know, the dropping in rates. That's what the environment that's going to be here. It's going to be kind of a tailwind to stocks and things like that. Um, and I think the thing with uh, Kamala Harris is, and Biden too, would have been the same with Biden, is... I mean, they're they're corporate Democrats. Make no mistake, they're you know they're, they're corporate Democrats. And you know, again, this isn't uh, you know politics. You know, red versus blue. But the the bottom line with it is, at the end of the day, like you know, whether you agree with everything they do or not, that kind of stability of just knowing you know they're going to keep kind of the status quo, which again, everyone can have problems with, is good for the market trump is a complete wild card because the thing the problem with trump is like he's proven time and time again that really he's not about anything he is not and like when you hear people talk about trump that oh he's he's against the swamp but that guy is the epitome of the swamp and he surrounds himself with the people who are the epitome of the swamp i mean anybody who believes differently like really you have to ask yourself like what are you basing that on like what he says because when you look at his actions, I mean, his whole life, I mean, since, you know, obviously since he inherited his dad's money, like the dude's just, yeah. And then that's not his fault. Like, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with, you know, the way he's lived his life, hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, three wives, you know, kids from multiple families. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm being, I'm not being facetious. Like there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Good, more power to him. But as far as being like, uh, you know, uh, like against his own interests, like he's going to do something against, you know, big money or, 
No, he's not. In fact, that's that's the hardest part about, you know, rationalizing voting for Donald Trump. It's the fact that, like, you know he's not a Christian, first of all. The dude is not a Christian. So let me break that news to you. So that's why you're voting for him, because you think he cares about, you know, Christian this or that. The dude does not care. And again, there's nothing wrong with that other than he lies about it. But that's OK, too. Um, but, you know, that plus the fact that the, the problem with Donald Trump is not Trump. Trump can be a loose cannon. He can have a big mouth. Great. Do all those things. The thing is that other people who are more intelligent and aren't as weak as Donald Trump know how to manipulate a person like that. So they naturally like latch on. And those are the people that really benefit from a guy like Trump. Same thing. And again, the same thing happens on both sides in politics. So make no mistake. But the thing is, Trump, just his personality is very vulnerable to that kind of thing because he's so infatuated with loyalty and, and people looking up to him and, you know, flattery and those kind of things, which I mean, yeah, I mean, again, it, it, can you blame him? I mean, that, that's the life that he's lived, right? Like he's never known being a normal person. I mean, and then again, that's that is what it is. I was actually pretty interested recently or uh, I, I was kind of laughing when he was uh, selling the uh, the Trump silver coins. And I was like, dude, there's been likenesses of you out there for years and years and years. You know, people slaying in silver coins or gold coins or whatever. And uh, it's just funny, like, you know, to see like a president or a former president or a presidential candidate like slaying merchandise. It's just comedy. Uh, the other one recently, the, the Trump watches is just another like total like grift. It's crazy. Like, like I asked myself, like, how can people see that? Like if there's a, no joke, like, you know, if people were, if Obama was like, you know, come by my, my leather satchel or Dodo, people would be like, what the hell? Like I would laugh my ass off. I'd be like, what a clown, like any of them, you know what I mean? Bill Clinton's saxophone, a mini saxophone signature edition anything like that like who no what who wants to buy that crap but uh, you know it's just a, a funny funny environment i was actually like uh listening to a podcast or like a youtube video about uh, the trump um the trump watches and and i could have sworn because they were reading the website or the advertisement for it and it was talking about that it had over 200 grams of gold and i was like wait wait wait, wait, wait. that's a lot that would be heavy, right? Because that's what, three, six ounces? It could have been 100 ounces and maybe they miss, miss said, misspoke. But I, I mean, even three ounces of gold, that's, uh, that's going to be pretty heavy to wear. You know what I mean? Like, especially if you're, I'm assuming you wouldn't wear your $100,000 Trump edition watch uh, on a daily basis. But I mean, yeah, I mean, three ounces of gold on your wrist, that's, uh, you're asking to get, uh, you know you're asking to get stolen that stolen for sure that's crazy um but it's interesting too like when i was looking at the watches i was like what the hell and like you know there's i mean at this point the dude's selling shirts t-shirts flags shoes watches i mean silver coins it's it i mean it's kind of embarrassing actually i mean seriously like i, I don't care who it is again barack obama bill clinton george bush Reagan, any but like a president that's got a slang merchandise is just it's kind of embarrassing, you know what I mean? But I don't know, time flies, it's, it's an interesting time. Uh, obviously, you know, old man winter Biden got the boot, and it is what it is. I mean, you know, it, whether you agree with that or not, you think that's good, bad, whatever, it, it is what it is. I don't have control over that, you don't have control over that. Um, but you know, Trump. Trump, these like the assassination attempts. Uh, yeah, I mean, what can you say about that? You know, the dudes over here running, you know, rallies in far, you know, in someone's barn, you know, and he expects that, you know, there's not going to be a bunch of crazies. He's inspired a bunch of crazies. That's just the, the kind of people that gravitate towards Trump is the, the crazies. And you think that these people are like stable and like, you have no idea. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are. If you're, you know, a powerful person, the president, there's going to be people out there waiting to take you out. I mean, it does not matter, you know, if you're the most loved person, the most hated person, there's always someone out there who, you know, has gone down the rabbit holes willing to take you out. And like, you know, the Secret Service, I mean, they're, 
they're not infallible, you know, as they've shown time and time again. It's just, it's crazy that we're living through this, like, real. it is literally like a reality TV show at this point. But luckily, we are in the home stretch. And I'm interested to see how things play out because, like I said, to me, whether you agree with uh, Kamala Harris or not or whatever, like, the bottom line is she re represents stability. She re represents more of the same, which you can complain about inflation. You can complain about whatever. You know, everyone's going to have their gripes. But the bottom line is, as far as the market and assets, stability is important. It's very important because that stability, whether it's good or bad, again, provides some base layer of, of, of a place where we can progress to other things. Whereas if you have complete uncertainty, you undermine everything. If you're looking to get in there and change this or that or... The main thing, like, as far as Trump, if he won, the, the main reason, like, I wouldn't want him to win is mainly just because of Ukraine. Because, like, honestly, like, that whole... Russia just needs to stop with their BS. They need to just become the third world country that they are. And, you know, it, it just needs to be done. It, it needs to be, you know, taken to the conclusion. A change in that just really throws, you know, everything into chaos. It really does, in my opinion. But uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. There's going to be unhappy people either way. But, uh, you know, this is the world that we live in. I think that, you know, beginning of the year, a lot of people were concerned, like, if Trump wins this or that. That's not my, you know, I'm not scared Trump's going to end the world. He has a big mouth and he says a lot of stuff that he shouldn't. And, you know, I feel like it's funny because a lot of people, like a lot of MAGA people are like, he just makes mean tweets and you should look the other way. No, the dude's like a little bit on the unstable side. Just let's be real about it. I mean, let's own it. Come on. I mean, he just is. Um, but the thing with him is that, you know, that uncertainty, that shoot from the hip, you know, I'm in a good mood today. I'm not in a good mood today. It's just not presidential. I mean, it wasn't the first time. And I think, you know, he didn't really do much his first time. You know, people do oh, a great economy. He didn't have anything that was great. There was nothing great about Donald Trump's economy. It was a continuation of the same garbage that Obama did. And there was nothing there. There was nothing special. His tax cut was a disaster, particularly for people in uh, in wealthier states. I don't know about the poorer states, but in wealthier states, a disaster, a complete disaster. Um, and that was pretty much the only piece of legislation he passed. But I will say that had Trump not botched COVID like he did, and, and make no mistake, he did botch COVID. It, it was, again, it didn't need to be play out the way that it did. But if he didn't botch COVID, he had a really good shot to, to be, you know, reelected. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, but here we are. I mean, the, you know, the time has changed. He's, he should have, you know, just done what he said. And he said if he lost, he would never see him again. But he did. And of course, he didn't go away. So... I wouldn't be as surprised if he, uh, again, in 2028, ran again at 84, whatever the hell it'll be at that time. I mean, the, the biggest thing I feel bad for, which is ironic, is, is the Republican Party. Because if that happens, I would say if, if Trump loses this time, you know, some portion of the party, at, at like a significant portion is going to leave him behind. But he's not going to go willingly. And so that party is going to get split, which is going to make it even harder for them to, you know, to win you know, anything moving forward. And it's the Republican Party. I mean, not that I agree with their, you know, their uh, policies, but uh, I mean, they seem to have stood for something different prior to uh, Donald Trump than where they are now. And the question remains, like, will they return to that? Or is this just kind of the new status quo? We'll see. Your guess is as good as mine.